Hi there, and welcome to another interview, slightly different today. I've got the fabulous Olivia with me, and we're going to chat about many different subjects. And the first one is to say hello to Olivia, and would you like to talk about your low-carb keto carnivore-type journey? Absolutely, yes. I've just had my um, two-year anniversary, so that's um, an, a good milestone. Um, but my journey starts a, a few years before that. Uh, I was keto for about two, two and a half years. Uh, and progressed to carnivore but it all happened because I was um, researching nutrition having cared for my elderly parents when they um, unfortunately passed away about a decade ago from type 2 diabetes Alzheimer's uh, between them and many other conditions and I always thought I'm going to have to look into um, how I can prevent myself getting one of these hereditary hereditary diseases <laughs> And um, and decided to to research that. Thought it would be a little quick task that I would that I would do, and then I would add a few a few blueberries or something to my diet every week, and that would be that job done. But it ended up being a bit of a rabbit hole that I think um, a lot of us have fallen down. And um, I realised that there's quite a lot you can do to prevent yourself from getting not just those diseases, but many many others too. And it actually was a bit of a such an epiphany for me that I thought I'd rather use my background, which is all in in business and marketing and strategy, towards actually growing people understanding this very important message, which is pretty much the most important thing I think people need to understand in order to live a healthy life. So, so yes, I was not from a nutritional background at all. I just kind of came upon this as a as a, a person uh, just living their life normally, and and decided to to stay to stay involved for a little bit longer. <laughs> And how has the two years been? Are you feeling better than you were two years ago? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, it's such a stark difference. Even from being, I was keto before, as I said, and it was a very a very clean keto, strict keto diet, uh, only whole foods, no, absolutely nothing kind of uh, processed or sugar-like. Uh, and even from that kind of clean baseline, um, it was a very noticeable difference to to try out carnivore and I only did it as just almost like a a bit of a dare because I thought if I'm doing all this nutritional research I should just at least try out I keep hearing people talking about it so um, I'd like to just experience it and I'd always heard of people having you know autoimmune issues or mental health issues or really good reasons that they would do carnivore and I didn't feel like I had one of those but I thought I'd still give it a go anyway and even then I noticed so many changes um, as someone who didn't have anything they were looking to solve. Um, so that told me quite a lot and actually made me think, I think this is the way we're all supposed to be eating in a way. Uh, at least, you know, we all agree on real food, but I think there's still more benefit to get from continuing to to optimize um, and 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 focusing on, on the most nutritious food of all. So yes, I noticed many changes. My skin got better, my teeth, my eyes, um, my athletic performance just totally like my best speed on a on a indoor bike that I have doubled in a week um and it was just really crazy stuff that just suddenly took hold I remember waking up one day and I felt like I was the happiest I'd ever experienced feeling in my whole life and I couldn't work out why and I kept thinking you know something must have happened yesterday that made me like feel happy and I've forgotten what that is but I've still got the feeling of it but it, there wasn't anything it was just a normal Wednesday and I woke up and I just felt euphoric so that was another another moment of thinking there's something really very powerful about what what this is so I've never had any reason to think um to go back or to do any other diet since then and it's been yeah very productive and positive ever since then yeah, I suppose it's an obvious question after two years. You you must be thinking it's great. And for those that are listening on the audio podcast, you did do air quotes when you talked about hereditary diseases. Um, and there's a reason for that. And I, f I feel quite strongly about this because I fell hook, line and sinker for the genetic link to colon cancer, for instance, having lost both my parents very young. They followed the guidelines. Absolutely. My mother very much did with uh, skim milk and bran flakes and all of that sort of stuff. Freshly squeezed orange juice, no fat, saturated fat was not in her diet. And she died of colon cancer with a, with a horrific nine pound cancer growth in a colon. So... Um, I thought, I'm dying. This is it. Well, exactly your story. In fact, I didn't realize that we had similarities there. My stepfather, who was my real dad's brother, so it was hereditary, he had a coma from diabetes and an amputation. And I really thought my number was up. I really did. I'd already lost my dad. And um, 
uh, I've since realised that you do inherit some things like eating habits because I was eating exactly like my parents. And uh, I think that is underestimated in this space. But maybe that's for another interview, actually, because there's a few <laughs> things I want to talk to you about. Um, you're very active in the community. And one of the things maybe people don't know is you're very active behind the scenes with uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee and his book club. So I'd be really interested to hear about that, actually. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's a great little a little venture that we have um a book club which has been going about I think coming up to two years um, or 80, certainly 18 months um, and um, it was just something that came about from having a little community that we look after and a um, community of, of carnivores specifically and everyone being very close to each other and uh, I guess on the same journey and really needing each other to support you know, to support the journey that we're all on in trying to in trying to progress eating a different way, but also trying to reconcile that with the real world and what on earth is going on with all of this um, misinformation in many cases out there and how much we see others suffering. And it's a it's a hard time that I think we all as human beings are are trying to muddle our way through. And and the book club was kind of born out of that need of people wanting to learn together. And um, and be with people who are like-minded that they can um, they can be open and they can question and they can call out a lot of the things out there that don't make any sense, which maybe others in real life don't want to hear about or not open to hearing about. So um, it became a bit of a platform for making our way through the many fantastic literary material out there, books out there, and um, etc. That uh, that. Is available and we decided to go in it kind of together we noticed we were all reading kind of slightly different things in the same space but not quite the same one at the same time so we said you know why don't we turn this into a book club we'll start uh reading books together we'll vote on which ones we want to read every month and we we now progress through different topics so like we have done loads of nutrition and then we've moved on to environment and agriculture and ethics that was about a good five months and really dug into a lot on on that side some fantastic books there especially the ethical side which maybe sometimes we don't spend as much time thinking about um and now we've just moved back into onto mental health and so we progress through these topics and we read a book every month we meet every week and we uh discuss what we read and we challenge each other on what we think and we've gotten to some real kind of meaty discussions um if you look excuse the pun and um and and we just enjoy it. I think more than anything else, it's just the fun of just getting together and and having a chat with people that you really you know very well. And we're we're from all different corners of the earth. We've got everyone from or people coming in every week from East Coast Australia all the way to West Coast USA, the kind of land ridden way around the world. So we've got every time zone covered. So people are staying up till midnight to join book club. And people are waking up at 4 a.m. on the other end of it <laughs> to join this this meeting every week. So it's 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 good fun, and I think we're we're quite a a strong community now of of active discussers about all these all these interesting topics that we have to to work to work our way through. Excellent, and I'll put a link in the description so people can find out more about that. And I did just twig that I could actually put my book forward to make me be read about the guide to blood test. Yes, we will. I just yes, right. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't keep saying to you, I want to, I want to have a look at your book. So that would be a good way to do it. But we're in, um, we're just doing mental health right now. Um, yeah. I guess that one would be. I'm not sure what category that would be in. Would it? Would it just be general, general carnival yeah. or? Well, anyway, I, I, I wasn't here to plug my book. I, I just hit me as maybe that would be something. Now you talked about mental health. Um, there's also something else you're very much involved in, which is happening at the end of May, Saturday the 18th, Sunday the 19th, Monday the 20th of May, which is the Public Health Collaboration Conference. And uh, I mean, one of the big key topics you're going to talk about is can you fix mental health through food? I know there's some other topics as well. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about the conference and some of the guests that uh, it's pretty exciting meeting, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be um, our best conference yet. But um, so, yes, our conference is in London this year. Last year it was in Sheffield. So hopefully it's a lot more uh, accessible for well, some, not for everyone. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> um, 
but uh, it's in uh, South of London and um, we have a fantastic lineup planned. Um, we do have a focus on mental health this year and there's been lots of you know work in this field. In fact, um, as I mentioned in, in book club, um, Georgia Ead's book we've just completed, Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind, which was, is a fantastic book and we're actually having her on to interview her about it uh, next week. So um, it's something that the book club does every month as we have the author on. So um, so it's really very topical, I think, in our community to be exploring mental health. And some of the results that are coming out, even the study from Stanford le- last week, are so promising in, in terms of what they are showing as far as improvements and results and, um, and ways that we can use the ketogenic diet to really, really help people who... Um, have very, very difficult lives because of these issues. And the scale of it is a quite incredible. And at the Public Health Collaboration, we talk about you know, how much um, all of these chronic illnesses are costing the NHS in the UK. And um, and the numbers are just you know astronomical, but mental health is even larger than, than all of those. And um, it really is a, a, a huge problem from a societal point of view um, in terms of the impact that it has. So um, we are focusing on mental health this year. We have uh, Dr. Rachel Brown, who is a, a consultant psychiatrist from Scotland coming down, and Dr. Ian Campbell, who's doing research in Scotland as well on um, ketogenic uh, uh, diet and bipolar. Uh, Dr. Erin Bellamy, who's done a PhD on this, and, um, and others as well. So there's a good chunk of time put aside for mental health, and we really hope that's going to help keep the conversation alive um on on that really important topic yeah and i i know it's not just about mental health i mean a couple of the other things i was really grabbed by was does cholesterol cause heart disease does red meat shorten your lifespan so don't think it's a three-day thing just about that and you have one of my favorite authors i know we're talking about books actually a lot but first first up on saturday is gary torbs of course well, that's very exciting as a guest. <laughs> We're calling it the Dream Team um, Type 2 Diabetes Panel. I mean, Type 2 Diabetes is what PHC was kind of born out of in terms of what it started to tackle first with, you know, Dr. David Onwen being our scientific chair. So um, that uh, subject is, is is first off the block. So we've got Gary Torbs and David Onwen and Ken Berry all talking in that space and then on a panel together. So like we're calling it the dream team of uh, of, of um, type 2 diabetes conversations. Um, yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good one to get us off to a good start on the Saturday. Yeah, now you mentioned that you slipped in, you know, it's difficult to get to for some people, but I am actually going to be there. I'm, I'm definitely going to do it down in London. Of course, I do have viewers that are not even in England. So you're offering a live stream as well, I understand. Yep, that's right. And I think in particular for um, for anybody, anyone outside the US, anyone in the UK that can't make it, we are offering live stream. They went on sale last week and we have an early bird price on the live stream. So it's really worth trying to grab those sooner rather than later. Um, and I think some of the content that we have this year, we really have tried to design it to um, to 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 help people find the information that they they think that, that might be missing if they're researching this area. And I mean, I certainly do. Um, I certainly do remember experiencing that I was trying to compare different diets and always found that a very difficult thing to do and always found those very polarizing opinions on certain topics, but nobody quite bringing the information together so you can kind of qualify the different arguments alongside each other. So um, you were there last year, Stephen, when we did uh, a debate for the first time, which was, uh, do we need to eat plants? And that has... Um, that's done really well on YouTube. There's a lot of positive engagement from that from that from that session. And I think there is a place for us to have these open discussions in a in a in a professional, scientific, structured way so that people can get the information that they need. This isn't about about one side winning. This isn't about um, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to create anything other than just very sensible scientific based conversations and so this year we're trying to take that approach again on a, on a on a couple of topics that are generally can be a bit thorny and one of them is does cholesterol cause heart disease and we have dave feldman and adrian sotomoto coming over from um us and mexico and um and dave's going to be sharing his recent lmhr um 
uh, results and what that's telling us about uh, people who have high LDL but um, favorable triglyceride and HDL. What does that mean as far as um, risk of heart disease? Um, and we have, uh, we're going to have to announce some more, but we do have uh, one participant that we announced yesterday, Dr. Peter Landsberg, who is a uh, a, a very mainstream uh, lipidologist that is coming along to have that discussion with them. So we really do want to see all these ideas, you know, juxtaposed together. Let's let's see how it works when you when you start to challenge each other and get into the back and forth. And I think that's a really worth live streaming in for. I wouldn't want to miss that because it won't be on YouTube for a long time. So um, hopefully people will be interested in that kind of format. And um, we have another debate just like that on the Sunday, which is, does red meat shorten lifespan? And that's going to be Ben Bickman and Anthony Chafee, and then um, two other opposing speakers who we haven't announced yet. So um, so really interesting, I think, to, to have that kind of conversation starting to come through, because what we are very conscious of is that we don't want to, we're not here to exist in a bubble and to just continue to grow one argument in the hope that everyone will will come to it. We want to expand. We want to bring people in. We want to include different viewpoints and 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 you know and see how how they all fare against each other and keep an open mind. So so we think that's really exciting, worth live streaming in for wherever you are. And um, we've also got some great um some great other discussions we have, one on ultra processed food and how we um how we uh safeguard the next generation from all the dangers of it. And uh, we have um, Eddie Abu, who many people might recently have become familiar with, um, who is attending that. And Jane Buxton is going to be chairing that panel, talking about uh, how we how we keep kids away from this stuff and how we educate them differently. And we actually have a program that is looking to formulate a, a curric- part of the curriculum in schools to actually help children understand how to avoid UPFs, understand what they are, understand how to read labels, how to compare labels, what all these things are on the labels and to distinguish between what's good for them and what isn't. So we think there's a lot of work to do in that space as well. Um, I'm really excited to have Eddie join us to talk about that because he's obviously made droves of progress in in bringing along a demographic that is generally very hard to bring along and to, to kind of change their mind on some things. So, so yeah, it's really exciting. So hopefully people will want to join us on live stream and we'd love to have you there as well. Yeah, you see the, 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 the lineup is, is, is like you say the dream team and also it's very varied like Eddie Abu, Dr. Ken Berry, Dave Feldman, Gary Torbs. You've you've got all these big names in this in this community. And I think you're right about the echo chamber side side of things. I mean I'm looking into LP little A, especially because, you know, I'm interested in that and the bloods, as well as what I do with my coaching. And the best way to learn is to listen to the other side. Because you can't just you can't research something just by listening to people in the echo chamber giving you the same opinions. And, yep. of course, how can you argue a point unless you know what the point is that's being made in the first place? So I I felt last year with the plant should be plants discussion, and I, I, I will be honest, I was the person that heckled at the beginning when he said, the question is, should we eat plants? And I shouted out, no, which got a very big <laughs> laugh. But, um, it was... It was a great discussion. It was. It's really good to hear both sides. Whether you know you're open to it or not is is down to you. But you've got to hear what the opinions are to be able to make your own decision and 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 feel comfortable with it. So I I think it's great to have that and have people from the, the other side in inverted commas. Um, I think Saturday for me we covered quite well. I mean, you start with Gary Torbs, and then at ten fifteen you've got Ken Berry, who is like the biggest influencer, I suppose, in this space. Uh, a family physician, and obviously, you know, well liked and with a lot of followers. But I think all the way through, you know, David Unwin, and you've got uh, you've got who else have we got here? We've well, there's there's too many, isn't there? Helen Gowers, you know, with her, with her um, lifestyle club, which is really good, you know. And I, I just can't wait. Actually, I just can't wait. Christine Hill, the food re- uh, rebellion you were talking about. Yeah. Do you feel? Do you feel that um, the mental health thing on Sunday? You know, you got doc- like say Dr. Rachel Brown. Do you think that mental health has surprised people? Um, I did a coaching. Um, 
pool yesterday and this morning I did an interview with someone who looks so healthy as a personal trainer and was saying that she had the biggest problem getting people to understand she was not well because her problem was mental health. She she bought into the game changers, she did vegan and her mental health got even worse and she wasn't taken seriously. You know, even in this day and age, I think people underestimate the mental health. She said, my biggest problem in not being big-headed was I looked great. But inside, I was numb. I felt like I was completely disconnected. And it's only carnivore. Um, sorry to the people that like um, low-carb and keto, but it was only carnivore that actually made her reconnect with the world. Do you, th- do you think this is going to be something that is going to be more prominent and it's going to be less about weight loss, for instance? Yeah, I do actually. I think what is different about the mental health one, and I was talking to um, Dr. Erin Bellamy, don't know if you know her, um, about this, where, you know, we've for many years been on this, um, you're trying to push low carb for certain health conditions that tend to be the physical side of the of the equation, you know, the kind of the type 2 diabetes. And it's taken a long time to really get some traction because people have been pushing that for, for for physical conditions for many, many years. But we think that we've got, we've got this theory that there's going to be a bit of a, you know, a, an efficiency that comes almost like an economy of scale at some point that kicks in where the tipping point might come sooner for, for some of the newer um, conditions that can be improved with diet. Um, because A... There is just a little bit more of an understanding of 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 diet in general playing a big role in in anything, um, but also because I think with mental health it is I think the barrier with people understanding mental health isn't to do with the ketogenic diet or the carnivore diet. It's to do with diets in general. Like I don't think people understand enough about how diet can play a role in mental health. People just find that too far removed in the kind of equation of things to to consider that there could be any real effect and they obviously not um, close to how the body works and, you know, the kind of the gut brain health um, uh, highway and all of the the kind of the links there. But, um, you know, with books like Brain Energy and, and, and Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind, I really think that actually it could leapfrog some of the others um, because it is such a clear benefit and there's a space where there is nothing else that's really coming out as a solution. And it could actually, now we've got research coming out from Stanford as well, and so many pieces of research that are um, are being are being funded by, you know, people like uh, Jan Bazuki, that it, it could actually take off in a way that maybe goes quicker, faster than some of the others. Um, so we do need to just keep supporting it and trying to get this message out there because it's just such a powerful, powerful tool that we have that we're not availing of at the moment. Yeah, and it's strange because in sport, I mean, my background many years ago uh, was an advanced personal trainer and I managed to get someone to the Olympics. And you know what? Most of the time we spent on focusing and visualizing what we're doing, uh, mindset, positivity. And, you know, I, I did a talk in that arena and I can remember saying, firstly, let's do a real basic thought experiment. I've got two twins that walk in and they both want to break the 100 meter record for sprinting and they're, they're sort of near the top of their game and the first one speaks to me and says there's no way on earth i'm going to do this this is not going to happen and the second twin says i i feel this is in me i think i can do this now if you was a betting person who would you bet i used to do this to the to delegates who would you bet is going to probably do well and they would all go with the positive person i said well there you go straight away you do definitely believe that there is a connection between physical performance your body and what your mental state is once you realize that then you can expand that into many other areas that nutrition can affect your brain which which is without a doubt because then i talked about hunger you know when you're really hungry do you feel you're performing best or is your mind thinking about other things if you had a test would you go in um and you've just eaten a a, a great big meal and, and had drinks and dessert or would you go in and trying to feel lean and really on it so i think um although that's very basic it still gets the premise across that there's definitely a connection and and, and i see it time and time again in coaching that mental clarity or lack of brain fault however some you know tells me about it what they're essentially saying is they're operating at a different level uh, and the body composition so the other thing is what you mentioned there was uh, they even book coaching to change their body composition and within a few weeks it's like 
well, I'm, I've lost a bit of weight, but I'm so happy with how I'm thinking. I can't believe how alert I am. So I, I do feel that the more we talk about this and the more people uh, come to the fore and say how they're feeding, the, the bigger it will be. There's also that taboo, isn't there, about mental health. People don't want to say they're depressed. People don't want to say that uh, they feel stressed or they're anxious. They feel that it still looks down upon. And I think that's the other thing that's going to come from talking about this. Uh, it will bring more people to the fore to to actually admit, I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. Only last night, Jane was, you know, uh, coming back. My wife was coming back from uh, a trip to Sheffield, strangely enough. And there was somebody wanting to jump off a bridge. And we were talking about, you know, the, the, the police were all there. How how can people get to that state where they're so so anxious and feel so isolated that their only solution is to do something like that? So I, I, I think that's one of the things that's going to come from these sort of conferences is, I mean, I know Dr. Rachel Brown, I've had her on the panel. You know, you can get a nicer person that will talk about this in a way that makes you think, yeah, we just need to be honest in this conversation. And I think... I think um, diet is definitely underestimated, you know, and medications are thrown at people. And in the end, if you're not feeding your brain right, as Dr. Georgia Reed is saying, th it's not going to function right. To me, it seems obvious, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about that. That's on Sunday, isn't it? That's the, the panel with uh, Oxley and Campbell as well. And they're in Bellamy, yeah. I think you said so. And so we need to have these professionals on the mental health one in particular, are all UK based. You know, these are doctors that are uh, in the NHS system and, and and making these changes from within as well. So that's something we believe in very, very strongly. And obviously everything that PHC is about is trying to change the system, not just not just be out there educating people and empowering them. That's a huge part of what we do. But, um, you know, what we believe is m as important and that we have taken on as a responsibility is, you know, some of the other parts of the agenda there, Stephen, that you touched on, where we have projects in play that are changing the system as we know it. So if you want to have somebody um, in your family that is in, past the country and finds that they've got type 2 diabetes, if you want to make sure that they get a low carb, um, you know, structured approach to managing that when they go to see their own GP, then that's the kind of service we're trying to make sure it is widely available um similarly with food addiction it's a service to help people who really struggle there so um you know we're actually trying to change the health system and in the case of the real food rebellion we're trying to change the education system so that people understand and children in particular understand um right from the get-go how to never get into the position of needing to to see their gb front GP for any of these diseases. So, you know, as much as, as as we are about educating people, it is about getting the system changed. So if anyone's in any doubt about whether to support us, this is me I'm totally plugging plugging us now because we are a charity, we're not for profit. And everything that we every proceed that we make goes towards those programs, which is changing the system. So if you want to see the system changed, then we are a fantastic organization that is trying to do that. Um, grassroots up, but also you know, coordinating with the top where there is interest to hear from us as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, people, there will be links in the description for all these things. If you want to support the PHC, you can do that. If you want to book the live stream, you can. If you want to attend in person, you can. Uh, just sort of some housekeeping then on the live streams. If you um, book that, will there be playbacks or do they only get the chance to watch it live or will they be able to watch it at their, their leisure? They'll be able to watch it for, I think it's a few weeks afterwards. It will be available on the same platform once you have purchased the um, purchased the live stream. So you don't have to watch it live. You can watch it shortly after. But it will be a lot sooner than when it will be you know, fully available on YouTube. That will be some, some months down the line. Yeah, that's great. And I think that that's brilliant that you do that because last year's Sheffield thing, there's more and more online recently on YouTube. So it's really nice for people that, you know, where budget is tight, um, then they can still get that information. And then, uh, you know, you're finishing the Sunday pretty strong. You've got Dr. Anthony Chafee, you've got Benjamin Bickman, you've got Jane Buxton uh, and Eddie Abu. So you've got some really popular people, big names there with lots of um, lots of followers and lots of knowledge. And I think that's going to be an interesting one about the Does Red Mate Shorten Lifespan because uh, I recently did a, an interview with with Anthony actually about it and um, the amount of comments saying 
this just can't be true. This can't be true. I think there is a lot of interest because there's so much misinformation out there, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest challenges, um, you know, I did mention earlier about having these kind of debates is getting people to come and have the discussion with us. I mean, that is without a doubt, um, a, you know, one of the, the the biggest overheads to taking this approach is very easy to get people who are in our low carb space to come along and talk about, you know, what they normally talk about to a very friendly audience. But, you know, the kind of people that will have a different opinion on red meat don't necessarily want to come and talk about it. So, um, so it's so it's it's harder, but I think it's worth it. Um, but um, you know, I do wish that we would change our way of thinking about about being in different camps and being, you know, seeing this as some kind of diet war um, game <laughs> that we're playing. We just want to talk about nutrition and have these open conversations so that people commenting on that on that post, like you said, should be able to find out the answer. Like they've heard something very different. So let's bring all those views together. You know. Um, we should all be open to 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 coming to coming to the table. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things. It, it's very strange for me because I'm pretty placid. I don't swear. I don't get angry. And if I see something from a follower that, uh, you know, from an influencer that, you know, I respect but disagree with, I'll always put a polite comment in, and say, "Well, I see you're pushing 400 grams of carbohydrates. You know, I, I don't think that's right. Um, this is a real thing that recently happened. And instead of talking about the data or what I'm saying, I just got, uh, well, you're pretty miserable. I'm glad you're not following me anymore. That was Thomas DeLauer. And you just think, well, I'm only querying this huge amount of carbohydrates. So it's it's a very odd thing that um, people don't want to engage in, a, in a, an intelligent conversation sometimes. And uh, it's surprising people as well. Anyway, um, I think we've covered... As much as I wanted to waffle on about it, uh, do you have anything else you want to to add in while you're here, Olivia? Um, I don't think so. I think I've waffled on about everything I needed to waffle on about. So, <laughs> but it's always good to always good to chat. Um, and yeah, just a little looking forward to seeing you and seeing everyone everyone together. It's a very it's almost like having a wedding, you know, when everyone that you know in every space is suddenly going to be in the same place. It's very very exciting. So um, <laughs> I can't wait to can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, I think it, I, I'm actually really excited. And I think the names that you've got there, the people you've got coming, uh, I didn't know a couple of them. And that's the other good thing about these conferences. You, you 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 find another voice to listen to. And that voice might be slightly different. It might have a slightly different opinion and have all the studies to back it up or real world experience. I mean, I'll use Dr. David Unwin as a, as a perfect example. I think, you know, he keeps his light under a bushel in comparison to how successful he is with reversing diabetes, this 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 guy should be everywhere. You know, he he, he is brilliant, and he he very good with the data, very unassuming. So I'm hoping I'll find another David Unwin. I'll find another person that I can look into who uh, maybe isn't get the the exposure they need um, or deserve from from the work they're doing. So. I want to thank you for the work you're doing to push, uh, push and promote this. Uh, sadly, in this world, we have to do this. The only way you're going to get people to come is to tell people about it and promote it and keep putting the information up and saying, well, you know, this is what we will be covering. Does this sound interesting? Look at these great speakers. So over the next couple of months, because we're recording this, you know, at the beginning of April, up until the end of May, I'll, I'll be putting out reels and shorts. And I'm sorry if it's too much, but I just think it's such a valuable experience. If you can't get there in person, do it on the live stream. I can assure you, you you will be glad that you've watched it. I really think it's fabulous. So thanks again, Olivia. And I think it's really great to just kind of underline that, it. you know, you talked about maybe finding the next David Onward. It's such a great community to be there in person if you can be, because everyone, the feedback we get every single year is people just leave on a high they get to know people they never thought they imagined they would know um and it's just good fun it's just a really great atmosphere to be with so many like-minded people who are all really healthy and living the best that they can and just want to promote that and pay it forward so um it's a very positive space to be so we really hope people can make it along if they can yeah, you see, and the biggest thing for me is last year I met the wonderful Ben Bickman, had a couple of selfies with him, and both times got my eyes shut. So this time I'm going to try and have a decent picture with him. But anyway, That's why we had to bring him back for you. That's why, Stephen. <laughs> so thank you very much.